You're watching MMA Odds Breaker. I'm Frank Trigg. That is Alita Gray, great ready to fight on World Series of Fighting number eight. Come up here in Hollywood, California. It's uh, my first time actually to interview and meet with Alita. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Frank? Good, good. I can hear the uh, someone hitting mitts in the background. Uh, where gym are you at right now? Finishing up a workout here at Bushido MMA. Um, I'm gonna have somebody close the door. That way we can uh, have clear sound. What uh, what did you do today? It's a Saturday. It's a uh, um, early evening for you right now. But what did you do today as far as your workout goes? I uh, woke up, had a good breakfast, um, rested a little bit, and then I headed on over to Trans Mountain here in El Paso. Uh, ran about five miles uphill with about a 50, 30, 30 to 50 gust wind. So it was a tough run. Had to <laughs> start uh, hurting my back a little bit. So, But I got done with the run. We came on, on over to our gym and, um, and made it a little bit. Just got done right now. Okay. First, let's talk about women's MMA as a whole. When you were fighting amateur, did you expect women's the women's game to be this big in, in, you know, in the beginning of 2014? Um, I knew at one point it was going to get big. Um, Ronda Rousey was doing a great job. Um, you know, Chris Cyborg was doing a good job in the MMA circuit. Um, you know, Tisha Torres, uh, Felice Herring. And uh, Carla Sparza, they're all doing an amazing job uh, promoting women's MMA. And um, I'm really happy where we're at right now in uh, the beginning of 2014. And now all of a sudden the straw weight, the 115-pounders now are a major, a major, at least media points, a major talking force. Is there been a lot more, pay, you know, a lot more media people paying attention to you, a lot more fans paying attention to you now because the straw weight division is, is exploding throughout all the promotions? Um, once, uh, 135, uh, hit the UFC, I knew that that next weight class was going to be that straw weight. Um, so I'm pretty excited where we're at right now. Um, you know, with, the uh, UFC bringing in the straw weights into the UFC, I mean, we're in a great spot right now. It's, it's our time to shine and, you know, it's going to be good for us, for us straw weights. All right. Let's talk about world series of fighting first. As an amateur, you went four and one, uh, starting in 2010, and now as a pro, you're four and zero. Oh. You're fighting Jessica Aguilar, who's 16 and four. So from experience level, she's way ahead of you. But that's not necessarily how the game goes anymore. And and even the men as well as the women, you can't look at these records. It doesn't it doesn't matter anymore. The records. It's all about the actual competition, the matchup. How do you see Jessica approaching this fight when she comes in to fight you? Um. You know, well, I hope she takes it serious, you know. Um, you know, she does have a lot more experience in the cage than I do. But, you know, I'm coming from a judo background. I've competed all over the world in judo. So I, I hope that she's taking it a little bit serious and not really looking at my 4-0 record or my, my amateur record. Um, you know, I've competed, you know, in Cuba. I've competed in England, Italy. And so, you know, those were some tough competitors. And, um, you know, it's going to be a fight January 18th. Well, well most people don't know. I, I, have a, I have a second degree black belt in judo. And so I understand the judo game as well. And when, when you're talking about competing in Cuba, the women's program in Cuba is top two in the world every year. You're talking about competing in England. The women's program in England is top five in the world every year. Italy is top right. eight every year. America is like top Thirty, like we're not very good internationally at judo. So when our women go over and compete, it's a huge experience up for most of our women to, to fight over there. And you get guys, women. I keep saying guys, but women like you and like, and right. like Ronda Rousey that compete internationally and do very well in the international circuits. It's a different game. Like, like even with your four and zero record, you're at a different level. How much judo is really going to be in your game when it's, when when it gets down to it and you got to grab a hold of Jessica? How much judo is actually going to play into it versus how much you've learned over your last several fights? Um, it's going to play in when I need it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to try and keep the, the fight standing as much as possible. And, uh, you know, I know she's going to try and take me down if that's going to be her game plan. And I'm going to, I'm going to use it when it, when it's needed. I'm not going to rely on it. I'm not going to depend on it. You know, I have other skills that I've improved on in these last four years. And so, you know, whatever comes, I've worked on my jits. I've worked on my wrestling the past six years. And I've been working on my uh, kicks and boxing for, you know, four years now. So, 
you know, all around, I think uh, I'm a good MMA fighter. And um, where, whatever she brings to me, I'm going to be ready. All right, last question before I let you out of here. This is January of 2014. Everybody has a New Year's resolution. Every fighter is going to be the champ. Every fighter is going to be a millionaire. Every fighter is going to be the best. That's just what we are. That's how we act. What's happened to you, though, from, the, from January 2013 to January 2014 that's changed you as a woman? Whatever it is, it could be anything at all. It doesn't have to be sports related, but what's the biggest significant difference that happened to you in 2013 to get you prepped for 2014? I think what happened to me was that I finally made up my mind that I wanted to be a professional MMA fighter. Um, I made that decision this past summer. And so from summer to the end of 2013 till now to this point, I've uh, focused a lot more on my, on my MMA. Um, I had to stop coaching wrestling. I was a head wrestling coach here in El Paso, Texas. Oh. So I was the first female head wrestling coach in the state of Texas. And that was a big thing for me. That was a big deal. Um, and I had to let that go. You know, you, you get to know these kids at the high school level. You got freshmen, seniors and stuff. And you get to know them a little bit. But at the same time, they had to understand where I wanted to go uh, with this. And they did. They were very supportive. They told me, you know, go. You know, you got to get your dreams, coach, just like you told us. You know, we have to work hard. You have to work hard. So, you know, and uh, I had to let that go. Right now, I'm, I'm a teacher. I teach kindergarten to fifth grade, uh, PE. So, you know, I'm still teaching. And uh, luckily, my principal and administrators at school, they're really helpful. Uh, they're working around my schedule and stuff. And um, they're very supportive of me. All right, last thing before I, I let you both out of here. Your last amateur fight was September of 2012. Then when you decided to become a professional athlete, you fought June 2013, July 2013, October 2013, November 2013, and you get ready to fight your first fight, your fifth fight as, your, as a pro in 2014, January 18th. So it's only been two months off since you fought last. And you are on a complete terror right now. Submission, TKO, KO, TKO. This is, I mean, you're not, you're not submitting people. You're not look, doing these long, drawn-out, three-round matches. You're going out there and you're finishing women at the strawweight division. And I, I got to be honest with you, Ray Suffo is, is one of my Muay Thai coaches here at Shrink Couture in Las Vegas. I've known Ray for a very long time, um, a, a, a true gentleman. And I couldn't, he was excited when he signed you to fight World Series of Fighting. He came <laughs> in. And it's, it's, you got, you have a very bright future ahead of you, no matter what happens with Jessica. You have a very Thank bright you. future. And it, it's going to be fun to watch you fight on January 18th, for sure. Thank you, Frank. I appreciate it. Um, and like I said, you know, when uh, summer hit and I made up my mind that I wanted to be a pro, it was just go time for, for me and my team. And so we've just been lining up the fights back to back. So, you know, it's going to be an exciting 2014 for women's MMA. And um, get ready for this. It's going to be fun. Thanks, Alita. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. All right, Frank. See you. Bye-bye.